At the risk of boring you, let's try some repetition. Where we have a function f of x, which can be represented by an infinite power series, and is infinitely differentiable, and the derivative, derivatives exist, then we can define a Taylor series. See the thermodynamics video number 13. Analytic functions of Taylor series expansions, at x is equal to a, or z is equal to z0, or whatever it is you prefer. Taylor series can work for functions of a complex variable z, such that z is equal to x plus i times y. In the following minutes, I present two ways of viewing the Lorentz series. Before doing so, we need to look at the Taylor series. First of all, in the manner I discussed in thermodynamics video number 13, and then through using the Cauchy integral formula, because that leads us to the Lorentz series expansion. So, in the previous video, number 13, in thermodynamics, I did the following approach. All continuous functions may be expanded in, as an infinite power series in the following manner. Let's examine the infinite derivatives of f of x centered at x is equal to x0. So let's take, let's say, t start taking the derivatives of this function up here and see what happens. The first derivative is going to be a sub 1. That's because this term here is going to go to 0 and all the other terms will be 0 because they will still have an x minus x0 component which will go to 0 when we let the function go to x0. Similarly, if we take the second derivative, we'll be left over with a sub 2 multiplied by a coefficient. This seg seg segment here will be gone but all the other expressions in the power series will have an x minus x0 term, which will go to 0. The point here is, if we take the first derivative, we get the, well, second coefficient. If we take the second derivative, we get the third coefficient. If we take the third derivative, we get the fourth coefficient. Of course, the first coefficient is a sub 0, and you get that by having the zeroth derivative, if you want to think about it that way. It seems that if we take the nth derivative of our function and evaluate it at x is equal to x0, it's equal to n factorial multiplied by the coefficient itself. We of course may rearrange this to calculate the coefficient a sub n, which is 1 over n factorial and the nth derivative of your function evaluated at x0. This allows us to rewrite the power series as the Taylor series expansion, which is written towards the bottom of your screen. Note, by the way, this only works for analytic functions, functions which are infinitely differentiable. differentiable. They don't have uh, zeros and they don't have poles. That was pretty straightforward. However, it doesn't help us in deriving the Lorentz series. So I'm going to tackle this again using the Cauchy integral formula. But there's a more elegant and useful method for doing this, involving the Cauchy integral formula, which I've written at the top of your screen. Note, by the way, we're integrating the function capital F of Z, which is not analytic, but we rewrite it as the ratio of the analytic function small f of Z and Z minus A, where A is the pole. The result is the value of small f evaluated at A multiplied by twice pi i. And we refer to this f of a as the residue, something I'll discuss in the next video. Now, whether I use the placeholder a or z0 for the pole is irrelevant. In this particular expression, I use a, but for the remainder of the video, I'm going to use z0. Here, I have rearranged the Cauchy integral formula to calc for, the, for the residue, so we have f of z0 is so 1 over twice pi i, the anti-clockwise closed contour integral of small f of z dz over z minus z0. To be explicit, I've shown the fact that we're really integrating the function capital F of z, which is not analytic. Note, by the way, what you get out is a function of, what's, what, what, is, of what is here. So z0 and z0. Now I'm going to introduce two dummy variables. z is going to go to z prime. z0 is going to go to z. The graphical interpretation of which you'll see in a moment. 
Now it's for this reason that I've also placed these uh I have placed the small pink arrows. It's just to make you clear as to where the primes are and where they aren't. So the new variable of integration is dz prime. And we're going to integrate down from z prime to z. And that as a result is going to give us out f of z. Truth be told, we want f of z. We don't want f of z prime. But we're using this dummy variable f or excuse me z prime in order to get at f of z and later to actually get at the pole z zero.